that in the not so distant future we can produce with our metabolism the energy we need to power up all medical devices. Diabetes is a disease of our times, driven by our expanding waistlines. And research shows cases could more than double to 1.3 billion in less than three decades. Around 96% of cases are type 2 diabetes. The other 4% is the more severe type 1, thought to originate from an autoimmune disorder. I'm in the happy um, situation that I have no complications and uh, others in my age, uh, they become blind or they need to take away the leg or something. This is very uh, often in, in, uh, in a diabetes life. For sufferers like Peter Walt, the disease rules his life. So Peter, when did you discover that you had type 1 diabetes? Yeah, it was in 1983. I was 19 years old and then I uh, had the diagnosis diabetes, yeah. Since then, diabetes is a part of my life. Every hour, every minute, I need to think about, need I have to, to eat something or need I make an injection? In type 1 diabetes, the body's immune system mistakenly attacks and destroys the insulin-producing cells in the pancreas. As a result, sufferers need to inject themselves with insulin up to 10 times a day, or have an insulin pump attached to the body to control blood sugar levels. How do you know um, when you need to have an injection or not? I have a, a special sensor, it's uh, this one. I can read my blood sugar every five minutes. I wear it day and night, so I have also alarms in the night. So this is part of my life. Yeah. Oh, wow. it's, it's alarm, it's alarm. I'm too high. So what do we do now? Do you need to go and have an injection? An injection, yeah. I have two uh, injections here. One is the quick insulin because I need very quick an injection there. Okay. Type 1 diabetes is a lifelong condition that can happen at any age with no known cause or cure. And that's it, done. That's done. Yeah. You're alright? You feeling okay? Uh, it's not so good because um, a high blood sugar means that I'm tired. Conditions associated with high glucose levels include kidney failure, heart attacks, stroke and limb amputation. So the sensor and its energy supply are vital. So how is the sensor in your arm and, and this little gadget, how is that powered? Uh, the sensor has a small battery in, inside and uh, there is a Bluetooth connection between the, the sensor and uh, this device. Yeah. And this is what, just a USB like you charge your phone or something like that? Yes, I have a cable, I can charge it. Every day of my life I need to think about it. What you just witnessed is the reality for so many people living with type 1 diabetes. And I've come here to Basel in Switzerland to meet a group of researchers who have developed a piece of biotech that could completely transform the lives of people like Peter. For 10 years, Martin Fusenegger, an award-winning professor of biotechnology and bioengineering at ETH Zurich, has researched ways of treating diabetes. This tech that you've come up with, I mean, was the idea initially to help diabetics like Peter? No, not at all. I mean, we went, uh, last winter, we went through an energy crisis worldwide, so everybody was looking for energy. And electrical energy is our prime energy source, right? We need to have electrical energy available, not only to drive our cars and heat our homes, but we have a lot of electronic devices we carry with us. We thought we have all metabolic energy in our body and most of much have way too much metabolic energy in the body, so we grow a bit fat, we, we, we don't run, we don't do sports, we love good food everywhere in the world, and we have too much of that. So we, we thought it would be very nice if we could use this metabolic energy, convert it into electricity to drive our medical devices in the future. The metabolic energy he's talking about is created when sugar molecules like glucose or fat are broken down, giving us energy. And that's why we came up with this metabolic fuel cell converting blood glucose into electricity. So instead of having to wear a monitor that constantly needs battery changes, the professor's fuel cell can be worn under the skin. So this is uh, the metabolic fuel cell we came up with. Uh, you could think of this like a battery. 
It has a plus and minus pole, we know, and that's the electricity coming out. And we have the little tea bag here with the magic material inside. We call this a tea bag because when we implant this on, in, in the arm, the bloodstream would flow around, infusing into the metabolic fuel cell, and there the glucose breakdown takes place. What I still don't understand is why you decided to make this device for diabetics. Why not make something for people with pacemakers or hearing aids? So essentially this device could be for everybody, but since glucose levels is the primary concern of diabetics, we thought we could uh, take double advantage of this uh, little device. We had a companion technology, which was cells of the body, which we genetically engineered to, to produce insulin. Now the diabetics have everything in one closed loop package and hopefully will make diabetes a thing of the past. Big words from Martin, eradicating diabetes with glucose-powered, insulin-producing, genetically modified cells. Whose job is it to make that work? So you're both postdoctoral researchers. Yeah. Yes. So did Martin come up with this idea and then he just handed it to you two and say, make it work? Yes. Yes, it went like that. It did? That's how it worked? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Martin calls Pretum and Debesis the Brains Trust. Let's start with the fuel cell. How does this work? Because it has to be implanted into the body, doesn't it? Yes, it will can implant in the body. So we have this anode and we have cathode. We actually separate with one polycellulose membrane, which is biocompatible. The anode is made of copper-based nanoparticles created by the team for this application. It splits the glucose into gluconic acid and a proton. The metabolic fuel cell then generates enough electricity to power a small device. The circuit component helps fine-tune the system. Now it is good for implant, but still not enough. So further we'll coat it with functionalized alginate, and you can feel that this alginate Ooh, yeah. coat it. Yeah, it's a little bit wet cell. and a little bit slimy. The alginate is found in brown algae. It seals the cell and forms a viscous gum when hydrated, so it's safe to put in the body. Now MFC, metabolic fuel cell, is ready. For a diabetic, the fuel cell is needed to power or trigger that companion tech Martin was talking about earlier, artificial beta cells that release insulin. So these are basically performing the function of, of the pancreas, is that right? Yes. So these are normal human cells. Uh, we cannot make human cells, they are taken out of a human body. Uh, you, for example, are made of billions of these uh, cells and we genetically engineer them uh, to program the behaviour we want, in our case, that they release insulin in response to electrical uh, stimulation or illumination by light. We uh, put together uh, gene devices, genetic circuits, which we uh, put into these cells, so they are programmed and behave like we would like to have. And in this case, they behave like beta cells. They can sense glucose, and they can re release insulin. To demonstrate how the fuel cell and beta cells work together, Pretum has set up a small experiment. The clear liquid contains glucose to represent blood. And then this tea bag soak up the excess glucose, it produces the electrical energy, and when we switch it on, it actually charges these plates, which contains the beta cells. Switching on an LED light not only shows how much electricity can be generated from glucose, it also shows cells could be programmed to react to blue light to trigger insulin release. But I don't understand, Pritam, how does the fuel cell you know, activate these beta cells to release the insulin. The function of the metabolic fuel cell is to generate electrical energy. And the beta cells over here, they are electronically active. So here we use electricity to help the channels open. And in the body, it is a high glucose that helps the channels open. So we are practically reinstating the function of glucose in the body. Clever. Thank you. Eventually, the fuel cell will be precisely packed without the wires and coupled with a capsule containing beta cells. The team has proven the technology works in a diabetic mouse. So can you explain to me what triggers what first in the body? The type 1 diabetic mouse has a happy life, but uh, as we do, it needs to eat. 
and due to food, food intake, the blood glucose levels rise. And then our tea bag, our metabolic fuel cell, realizes that blood glucose level is high. And then that shuts on the power circuit, so the glucose generates uh, electricity. And then that stimulates the whole device and stimulates also the insulin release. As a consequence, the insulin is flushed into the bloodstream. And as a consequence, glucose is pushed into the cells of the body to be consumed as energy. But as this happens, the glucose levels in the blood goes down and insulin levels uh, are still high. So to prevent uh, the blood glucose levels from going too low, the power circuit shuts down because the glucose is down, metabolic fuel cell no longer produces energy and insulin levels go down also, so it's shut off here. Yeah. And this is a circle which keeps your blood glucose levels always at optimal levels. The tragic long-term effects of diabetes are caused by high glucose levels, leading to fatty deposits over time severely damaging blood vessels. This efficient and controlled administration of insulin aims to eradicate much of these major health issues. But as Peter is about to discover, there's a long way to go. This uh, sounds for me a little bit like science fiction. How close are we now to this invention? We are very early on, it's a prototype. We showed that it conceptually works in an experimental diabetes model in a type 1 diabetic mouse. There we completely eliminated the diabetes from this mouse. And how long is the step between the mouse and me as a human being? How long do I have to wait? I would say um, 10 or more years because we are very early on. It's a prototype, it's a concept that works. It shows what could be possible in the future. A fuel cell run off the glucose in our blood. Is this a new concept? I mean, where else can you take this? We showed the pioneering impact on diabetics, but essentially it's just using your metabolism to produce electricity. And we hope that in the not so distant future, we can at least produce with our body, with our metabolism, the energy we need to uh, power up all these smart devices, smart watches, uh, uh, phones and so on, as well as all medical devices, implants, uh, pacemakers, uh, brain pacemakers, heart pacemakers, hearing devices, so that the energy will be covered by our metabolism. It's an exciting breakthrough. And while type 1 diabetes will continue to develop and exist, if Martin and his team can eventually bring this product to market, sufferers will get their health and their lives back.